to Syria now, though. If this description of what is happening in that country fails to get the world's attention, it is hard to imagine what else could. The U.N.'s top human rights official says the siege and bombardment of eastern Aleppo are, quote, crimes of historic proportions. Regime forces racked by backed by Russian warplanes are taking a brief humanitarian pause after pounding the rebel-held eastern parts of Aleppo. When the bombs fall, a small group of volunteers called the White Helmets run into smoldering rubble and rescue injured and trapped victims, including infants and little children. They saved the life of this five-year-old boy named Omran earlier this summer, his bloodied, shell-shocked face becoming a stark reminder of the toll of this war. The White Helmets estimate that they have saved more than 60,000 lives. It is a feat that earned them a Nobel Peace Prize nomination. The Washington Post has called their job among the most dangerous in the world. But even the bravest have broken down from the horror of this war. The motto of the White Helmets is to save a life is to save humanity. And a new Netflix documentary explores every day these parents, spouses, friends, they are civilians who risk their life to save others. attacks on hospitals and schools in rebel-held areas that left up to 50 civilians dead. دفاع مدني صعب القبضة على البيضاء اللي أول الناس بيكونوا موجودين حالة القصر. Joining me now, the directors of that film, Orlando Von Eisdell and, and uh, producer Joanna Nada Segara. Thank you guys for being here very, very much. Thank you for having us. Thank you, you. Spent, you spent over five weeks on the front lines with the White Helmets right there on the Syrian border. So you, I mean, you really experienced this war through their eyes. And, and again, the way that they, they believe uh, is that when they save a life, they are saving all of humanity. Joanna, let me begin with you. What was your takeaway in terms of what drives them to do this? We actually spent five weeks on the ground uh, in Turkey and to watch these men that had come out from Aleppo, from Idlib, from Homs, from Hama, and to right. see them be in a relatively safe country um, and, and still be carrying the war with them was really profound. These are ordinary people, as you said, in the VT. These are people that save lives and choose to do so on a voluntary basis. It's extraordinary work. Orlando, you, you wrote about this, and you wrote that you began to question yourselves, asking if you could be as strong if you were in their shoes. Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, this certainly, uh, when we were making this film, we'd ask ourselves that a lot. If war, like what these, the, the, these guys are experiencing every day in Syria, came to London or New York or Washington, could we, yeah. could we do the same as them? Could we every day wake up and risk our lives to save complete strangers and, and I think if I'm really going to be honest I, I just don't know if, if I could do it I mean I mean some of these these men are our are, are parents right and they have their own children at home and they're risking their own life to save infants like this one or the five-year-old Omron uh, it, it is remarkable another thing that struck me that you wrote about why you made this film and what you learned from it you write in the West far too often we are subjected to negative stereotypes of Muslim males. In stark contrast, these men were among the gentlest and kindest we had ever met. Joanna, what surprised you most about them after you spent those five weeks together? Mm -hmm. I mean, I was probably one of the only women on site living with these guys for five weeks and at no point did I ever feel anything but welcomed, safe, protected and included. Um, I think that's a, that's a message that is really worth sharing you know, globally, and these guys are, are the best of humanity. You also talk about only being able to show a, a tiny percentage of the horror, right? I mean, I, I mean, I 
have just seen bits and pieces of the film and the trailer and it breaks through and it's nothing like being on the ground or hearing from them when they come back from Syria back into Turkey. Do they have hope, Orlando, for what Syria will become, what they are fighting uh, to help the country become by saving these lives? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite extraordinary what, what they face every day, uh, you know, and the, the three main characters in, the, in, in our film, they're from Aleppo, and they, you know, every week they're experiencing hundreds of bombs and seeing the most horrendous civilian casualties. And yet, in spite of all of that, they still have hope. They still have hope that at some point this conflict will end. And I think as long as they have hope, us as a global community, we mm -hmm. also have to have hope too. We know... Um Many, many people around the world, many leaders of countries around the world, um, you know, are, are questioning the, the involvement or lack of involvement from the international community. President Obama has talked about the situation in Syria as something that haunts him as he looks at his legacy as president of the United States. Joanna, did, did they speak to you about the international community? Do they fail like feel like the international community has failed them? I think it's uh, not in question that, you know, there is a failing here when this amount of violence, this level of violence continues. Um, and I think all they want is for that violence to stop, for the bombs to stop, for the incidents to stop. So certainly we hope that, you know, in, in small part, when people watch this film, they can see the actual gravity of the situation on the ground, both at governmental level and on a public level, that it's, it's quite easy to see what is actually really happening on the ground. And I think Orlando oftentimes in, in wars, right, for people sitting at home on their couch in the United States, in the UK, it's hard for them to relate. They see the atrocity, they see the horror, but how do they relate to it? What do you hope your film does to make progress on that front? Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's so true. I mean, personally, I, I've certainly felt that over the years as this war has dragged on, it's so hard to, to, to engage with it. But the story of the White Helmets, this is a story of mm -hmm. real life heroes. It's a story of hope. And we believe it, it resonates globally. Uh, thank you very, very much. I can't wait to watch the, the entire film. Again, uh, The White Helmets on Netflix, Orlando, Joanna, thank you for all you put, poured into this and for bringing it to all of us. Thank, Thank you so you much for you. having us. Of course.